story you hear today is an actual case. We just changed the name of the university. That's one of the reasons that this is state U. The answer might be a little different if you're not a public university. Private universities, especially private religious universities, can sometimes have different rules when it comes to students. When you're talking about the First Amendment, you're talking about state action. Public universities have state action. But certainly the First Amendment does guarantee uh, these students to say what they want. Matter of fact, there's a famous case, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, in Tinker versus Des Moines quoted, students do not shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. One of the most famous quotes in the law. And it still holds true. Tinker versus Des Moines actually dealt with high school, but it applies just as, just as equally to colleges as well. <laughs> However, uh, you should be warned. Vulgar expression, and this is a recent case from the United States Supreme <coughs> Court. Vulgar expression is student expression that is lewd, offensive, or indecent. And schools may freely curtail it. And there was a recent case in, in Boston where official Fisher College student was expelled over his Facebook post because they were lewd and they were threatening. So you do have to be careful what you say, but you do have the right to your opinion. So Shorts okay. soon thought that Bastille O'Neill had an attitude problem. Bastille tried to explain to him that he's French, and it's expected for the French to have an attitude problem. <laughs> the coach didn't really buy that, so he sat to Bastille O'Neill down for the last five games of the, uh, of the season. O'Neill believed that that is the reason that they lost, that they didn't make it to the big games. And he said that on his own blog and you know, on his own Twitter and Facebook. He said, quote, Coach Short is the reason we missed the big dance. He is a bad coach. O'Neill's in trouble. Because O'Neill is number one, a basketball player, number two, on scholarship, the rules are different for him. If you are in a position where you represent the school as an ambassador of the school, the rules can be different for you. Additionally, the school does not have to put anybody on scholarship. The school does not have to give you a scholarship. They do not have to let you play basketball. These are privileges, not rights. But they can't expel him. They can kick him off the team. And they can take away his scholarship. And they do. Now, they take him off the team. They take away his scholarship. They can't expel him, though. However, once his scholarship's gone, O'Neill doesn't have enough money to stay in school. So O'Neill is now out of school. Once he's out of school, the Department of Justice or the Department of State takes away his visa. And then the Department of Homeland Security has him sent back to Paris, France, where now he uh, works at the uh, McDonald's in Paris, France, selling Royales with cheese. Uh, now, Lil Kimberly is a high school senior. Uh, she's not a student at State U, but she reads uh, her big brother's blog all the time, and she's been keeping up with it. Now, she just graduated from high school, so she's applying to State U. She wants to go to State U next year, but she's as mad as her brother is about the coach. So she puts on her Twitter and her Facebook, I applied to State U because it's close to home and cheap, but I hate that school. Fire Shorts and Free O'Neill. Now Coach Shorts eventually finds this out. So he goes to the admissions department. He tells the admissions department, don't even let that girl in. I don't want her coming to my school. What do we think? Do we like Kimberly or not? You like Kimberly? Shouldn't you like Kimberly too much? While students do have protections for any school that has selected admissions, and that includes a lot of public schools, any school that has selected admissions, prospective students are often declined admission because of online posts. In a recent poll, Admission officers said that at least 15% of the applicants that they looked at were negatively impacted as a result of what they found online in their Facebook or Twitter accounts. So they are looking, and it can affect you. The same holds true for graduate school if any of you are thinking of graduate school. Things that are put online that you think are private have a way of becoming not private. You can send something to somebody and think it's private, but you don't know what that person is going to do with it or what somebody else might do. Let's talk about some famous Facebook fails. This is, a, this is an actual Facebook post. This guy posted a picture of himself stealing gas out of a police car. I mean, that's a real Facebook post, and that's how the police caught him. This kid is 16 years old, and this is what he was quoted as saying. My life is over. 
These are the kids that uh, that raped that poor girl in the in the and took pictures of it, and put it on Twitter. Oh. Said his life is over now. No. This kid was a football star, probably had a pro career ahead of him, not anymore. Personally, I have to say I'm a little bit torn when I see things like this, as far as from from, from the standpoint of, of social media, because I I can't believe the stupidity. But honestly, a part of me is very happy that people are stupid enough yeah. to put their crimes <laughs> online because that's how they get caught. <laughs> So if, you know, kids don't commit crimes, but if you do, go ahead and put them on Facebook for us. <laughs> yes, don't, you know, don't put your phone number online if you can avoid it. Don't put your class schedule online. Don't put any personal information online that you don't, that you wouldn't allow, that you would pin to the front door of your apartment, you know, and allow everybody to see, because that's exactly what's going to happen. No this, this, this is from the USA Today just recently. Identity thieves stole the identity of the CEO of LifeLock and they were able to get money off of his social security number. So if it can happen to him, it can happen to you. <laughs> learn the English language, learn how to spell, and if you don't want to learn how to spell, then get a spell check program and use it for goodness sakes. Um, I mean, some of this, by the way, was an actual text that I got from a friend of mine. What? <laughs> As an attorney, you know, I do a lot of civil litigation. I've, I've sued a lot of people in my day. And the first thing I do when I have litigation against some individual, first thing I do is I Google them and I go to their Facebook page, their LinkedIn page, their Twitter page. See, that's the first thing I do. I print all that stuff out. And I print it out just in case they start deleting stuff. Shatty Kathy, she's a sophomore uh, at State U. She loves to talk. She loves to chat with people. She loves to chat on Facebook. Uh, but you know what she hates? Spam. She gets emails from these four people. Aaron sent out a blast email with, with the Chatty Cathy and several other people, inviting them all to a St. Patrick's Day rave party. Okay? Bobby sent Kathy an offer to buy Amway products from her. Charlie sent Kathy 15 emails cursing at her for refusing his Facebook friend request. <laughs> Dan emailed a naked picture of himself. That, that's not Dan. <laughs> All right. So do we like these guys? We dislike them? Kathy <laughs> brings charges against all four of them. Get rid of them all. I want them all out. So what do we think? What about Aaron? Like, dislike. Like? What about Bobby? No, Bobby? All right, Charlie? Y'all are right. Bobby, Charlie, and Dan, all of them end up getting expelled. Bobby, inappropriate online communication. Now, this is one that not a lot of people know about, and it's not a huge problem, but it's just something you should know about. Uh, it is inappropriate online communication if you, you use your, your .edu email account for any commercial purpose. You send somebody an email saying, hey, you know, buy my CD, buy this for me. That's illegal. You cannot use your .edu account for that. You can be suspended from school for that. Uh, what about Charlie? Now, he was, yo, wow. <laughs> yeah. What if you send it from an account that's not EDU? What if you send it from uh, an account that's not the .edu account? It was your personal account. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. I mean, you can do you can do whatever you want. Now you're still going to be bound by things like the speech code and things of that nature. Okay, but you can't use the actual EDU account for that. Charlie, remember, he sent her 15 emails cursing her out, saying, "Why didn't you respond to my friend request?" Well, certainly it's inappropriate online communication. You can't use foul language in, in emails. You can't threaten people in an email. But it's also cyber stalking. And cyberbullying. He was threatening her in emails, and he sent her repeated emails after not none of the emails were responded to. That's cyber stalking. Not only is that, not only is cyber stalking a uh, against school rules. It's against the law. You can go to jail for it, and the school is actually required to be required in 2014 to report that to the federal government. It's also illegal use of a campus computer uh, computer to commit a criminal act because stalking is a crime. All right, lastly, Dan, inappropriate online communication, obviously. Lewd behavior, and uh, which is also a crime. You can be arrested for that. It's also sexual harassment, which is a do not pass go trip right out of school, and no other school can ever want to take it, okay? And obviously, illegal use of a campus computer to commit a criminal act.
Aaron, Aaron was just fine. Aaron really didn't do anything wrong. As long as, you know, as long as this wasn't a commercial venture, he wasn't threatening anybody, he wasn't bullying anybody, he just invited her to a party. There's nothing really wrong with that. She never wrote up any more sign up since he said, what if she had never signed up for it? Well, it's not a commercial venture. He just sent out an email to a bunch of people and said, hey, I'm having a party. Uh, there's really nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's one email. You know, if she didn't want to come, she didn't have to come. Now, if he were to send repeated emails, keep sending emails over and over again, and if she asked him to stop, then you might be getting into, you know, a, a problem. But one email inviting somebody to a party, what's the problem with that? Right? Well, if, 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 a, if I take a picture in a public place, like, you know, say in the, in the football stadium, and the football, uh, the school's logo is on the field, can I post that with a guy? Imagine you're talking about like copyright violations, right. uh, trademark violations. Um, certainly you can post that. You know, most schools, as a matter of fact, um, most schools do not, if you were to post that into a commercial venture, you might have more of an issue, and you certainly would have more of an issue with a private, uh, uh, you know, uh, like a company. Most schools, although they do trademark their logos and they trademark their rights, they don't enforce them against individuals. Uh, it's just sort of an unwritten rule that they don't. If you post something on Facebook, if you post anything online, for purposes of, let's say, trademark or copyright, um, no, you start, like, a copyright owner does not lose his copyright or a trademark owner does not lose a trademark just because something was posted online. If something that's copyrighted or trademark is posted online, it still retains that trademark or that copyright. So you still, it doesn't mean you can go use it and put it wherever you want. However, if you're asking, does it become public from the sense of, can anybody see it? Yeah, that's why you shouldn't post things that are embarrassing or things that you, know, you wouldn't want to show your mother because these things have a way of showing up other places because there's not much to stop somebody else from reposting. Don't ever assume that something that you either text somebody or send somebody uh, in a, a, a message or an email or post anywhere, sent to an SMS or sent to a post on somebody's wall or a private message. Don't assume that that's going to remain private. Anything you send out of the cyberspace, assume that it could come back to bite you. Any other questions? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, she and you're talking about employers? Or employers yeah, yeah, she asked, are employers allowed to see your texting, your text messages? Um, not without your permission, no. Now, they're not allowed to, you know, they're not allowed to see your Facebook or anything without permission. This, this, this disturbing trend that I was talking about over the floor is employers demanding to see it. So there's also no law from keeping an employer, you know, from saying that an employer can't demand to look at you, say, give me your phone and let me read all your text messages. Um, you know, there should be a law that says they can't do that in the hiring process, but there isn't that. Like I said, there are states, I cannot remember all of them, and uh, if you want to email me, I'll give you a list of states where they, they are passing legislation on it. Um, but there are states where uh, they are trying to make it illegal to ask these questions or to make people do this during the hiring process. But right now, it's not illegal anywhere, and there's nothing to stop them from saying, let me see your phone. Remember to take it. Yeah, <laughs> Years ago, for some reason, you know, a lot of people got into their head that I can become a millionaire by sitting at home in my underwear and trying to sell things through email. Uh, and it became a real problem for a few years, but it's, I think people have learned that that's not really a good way to, that's really not a good life strategy. <laughs> you need to get dressed and get out and go work somewhere. If you want to run some commercial adventure, just don't run around your edu account. You know, honestly, I would say don't run a commercial adventure while you're in school. You're in school to learn. Uh, you know, you'll have the rest of your life to try to sell things. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, I just I don't think I don't think it's a good strategy to sell things when you went through. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, we're at booth three over at Colon Productions. If y'all have any questions, I'll see y'all at the exhibit hall. Thank you.